Stephen, if we want to understand the world around us, the one thing that really hits us all is that we find some things that are beautiful. Sometimes we don't even know why they're beautiful, but we have this emotional reaction. We just have a sense that there are things that are just magnificent in their beauty. And we, we, we can't define it any more than that. Maybe it's in the eye of the beholder, people say, but even in nature, there is beauty. How can the seemingly random qualities of the world results in things that we as human beings perceive as beautiful. I think one of the things I've been curious about is, is sort of nature seems to, in a quite effortless way, produce all sorts of things that seem to us quite beautiful. Yeah. What is kind of the mechanism that it's using to do that? And for example, one question is, can we generalize that mechanism? We find things in nature that we think are beautiful. Can we sort of extract from nature the essence of how it's making that beautiful stuff and generalize it? And one of the things that, that I've noticed is that in, in our efforts to kind of understand nature scientifically, um, we've been able to capture some of the essence of what allows nature to make many of the forms it makes and so on. And we can use that sort of scientific success to say, let's imagine nature's other than nature itself. And let's ask whether those natures other than nature itself can also produce forms that are beautiful and so on. And uh, what, what one finds is that, that uh, if one sort of just samples the possible rules that nature might use, mm -hmm. that some large fraction of them end up producing forms that to us seem quite wondrous and beautiful. It's, uh, it's just like, uh, I suppose, in biology, for example, there's a certain amount, uh, I believe that uh, nature is kind of sampling possible rules to make forms of plants and animals and things like that, that end up being diverse and in many cases apparently beautiful. Is it helpful to, to, to characterize what we mean by beauty? Does it include symmetry? Does it include little differences, uh, you know, asymmetries, breaking of symmetries? What are some of the characteristics that we can even, even put on things that we perceive as beautiful in nature? I think the, the one feature is that there's a certain richness. There has to be a certain richness and, and engaging features of, of the thing. There also has to be some sort of sense to it. Things that are just completely random, right. we lose interest in quite quickly. Sure. I mean, I've done kind of elaborate experiments with eye trackers and things, finding out what people actually oh, look at uh -huh, and so on, uh -huh. but not clear how, how much that really gets at the, uh -huh. at the essence of what's going on. But I think at a, at a sort of qualitative level, the thing to say is that there has to be a richness, yet a logic, a sense to mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been curious to see to what extent one can, can sort of abstract um, the, I mean, the, the, the sense, the, the fact that there's some logic to what's going on is a consequence of the fact that there are sort of some underlying rules to what's happening. The fact that there's richness is, is less obvious. The fact that you can have, in some cases, simple, understandable underlying rules, yet produce richness, that's what requires kind of a, a, a new realization in science um, to, to see how that can possibly be the case. But that's what we've discovered by, for example, studying the possible rules that exist in the computational universe, that there can be many cases where there are sort of simple, uh, understandable underlying rules, yet the, their consequences show great richness. What would so, be a, an example or describe an example between a, a simple rule, one of which would, would produce a complexity which was not very beautiful, and the other would produce a complexity that is beautiful? Well, I think, I, I mean, for the, you know, one of the things that tends to happen is whether there is sort of structure that um, goes beyond kind of the, the, the purely random. Um, but I think these are things where, you know, one can have an elaborate sort of uh, <laughs> mathematical almost theory, which kind of crushes out the essence of what's really interesting <laughs> in the whole thing. You know, what I'm curious about is, is as a practical matter, um, when we try to make things that are beautiful, one of the questions that's sort of an interesting technological question is, can we mass produce beautiful, distinct, beautiful things? Distinct? I, yes, distinct. Can we sort of mass customize beautiful things? Hmm. So I've done a couple of experiments in this mm -hmm. regard. I had wondered, um, uh, the, I had thought about musical forms. And I had wondered about the question of whether with simple rules, it's possible to produce engaging, interesting musical forms. 
And uh, I kind of uh, heard from friends of mine who are involved in algorithmic composition and so on. They were bemoaning the fact that there's uh, nobody will ever want to take this seriously. There's no reason to ever do it. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I was uh, increasingly frustrated that my cell phone sounded just like everybody, others, everybody else's <laughs> cell phone. So I decided I, I really need a, an absolutely unique <laughs> cell phone ringtone. So from this frivolity um, emerged sort of a project to kind of see in the, in the universe of possible rules um, what, what's, what music do they make? And the thing that, that we found that was, to me, quite surprising was that from even extremely simple rules, it was possible to make rich, interesting, diverse kinds of music. I'm not a, a critic of music. I was, you know, I read by the newspapers covered this kind of thing. I was, I was pleased that their critics uh, thought, yes, this is pretty decent music. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, um, but to me, actually, this, this told us something I think fundamentally, scientifically interesting. I mean, I think one of the things that uh, a comment made by by somebody who studies this kind of thing scientifically about these particular kinds of, of rules that we use to make this music, they're things called cellular automata. And uh, the comment that was made is, when you hear the music they make, one realizes that these things are a lot more like us than we <laughs> might have thought before. <laughs> one might have imagined that these very simple rules um, that just sort of operate in this sort of straightforward, uh, in a sense, logical way, would never be able to produce the kind of richness that uh, we attribute to kind of humanly produced, beautiful musical forms. Mm. But in fact, they they do. And what's interesting about it is that there's there's kind of a, um, while there is richness, there is also, it all makes sense. You have a piece that may be a couple of minutes long, and uh, there's, um, uh, it's not as if, the different parts of the piece are just sort of generated at random. It's rather there's a single kind of underlying rule that goes through the whole piece. Mm -hmm. Same idea you can you can think about in, in kind of uh, visual or architectural form. One of the things I've been curious about is this. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. The, um, but one of the things I've been curious about is can one make a building, for example, where there's just a single rule and the whole thing just sort of, it all makes sense from the moldings up to the whole form of the building. Mm -hmm. Could there be just sort of one rule where people perceive it as making sense, um, but where the whole structure and form has the kind of richness that we uh, kind of dwell on and consider beautiful? Mm -hmm. And actually, I think uh, now that a whole bunch of architects have been interested in this, and so they're actually are starting to be buildings designed, and perhaps even they'll be built before yeah. long, and we may see skyscrapers that uh, have these kinds of, uh, that are sort of grown from rules. And in a sense, what we're doing here is to, to, to sort of, uh, we're mimicking nature in the sense that we're using the general kinds of rules that nature uses, but we're sort of vastly generalizing the particular rules that nature happens to use. So we're sort of extracting the essence of nature that potentially makes the kinds of beautiful forms we see in nature, but we're kind of looking in other corners of the universe of possible such rules, and then uh, we're, we, we have the potential to, to sort of create these things that, that capture the essence of the beauty of nature, but aren't nature itself. So can we ask, is there a future to beauty? Will this be a progressive development? It's an interesting question. <laughs> so, you know, I think the one constant is nature has been the same forever. Mm -hmm. And some parts of things we consider beautiful come in sort of emulation of nature and are things that uh, uh, we're sort of familiar with because they come from the nature that is around us. But if we look at sort of the progression of, of forms that have been used in art, for example, I've been curious as one goes back and looks at when did particular kinds of rules that might be used to create forms first mm -hmm. occur in art, and you right. know, like repetitive forms have been common since antiquity, right. Right. kind of nested forms where sort of identical right. things right. occur. I found, I think it's in 1202, um, was the, the first occurrence of that form, and then, then it disappears for a few centuries mm. um, and reappears again. Um, and so we can ask the question, what, what other kinds of forms like this um, will will be things that are strong sort of motifs that exist in in the art and and uh, of the future. My own guess is that 
they will be things that in part emerge from what we're familiar with in technology. Technology today is still dominated by kind of the, the straight lines and circles and so on. Technology of the future, I think, will sample more broadly the space of possible forms and rules and so on. And I suspect many of those things that we will in the future become familiar with will end up sort of feeding into uh, what, our, what our future perception of what, what we expect, what we're familiar with, in, with and what, uh, what is beautiful. In a sense, all of these things will be, will be generalizations of the essence of the mechanisms of nature, but there'll be things that we've kind of, uh, we've taken a, a new and different slice uh, from those, for those, those forms which come from the essence of nature.